Well, hey everybody, how's it going? It's Embrace the Matrix. And I thought this painting would be another great painting for a uh, voiceover. So sit back, relax for the next 20 or so minutes, and uh, watch and listen. So, yeah, this one, as you can tell by the title, is called Beyond the Reflection. And the idea I had for this one was that if you were looking into a mirror and looking back at yourself but looking beyond your reflection so to speak like what would you see like how how would you envision things you know would they be bright and cheery colorful or would they be somewhat dark and dismal mine wasn't very bright and cheery <laughs> Um, but I have a pretty, uh, pretty interesting past, uh, which I'm, I'm not going to get into. Um, but, um, let's just say I haven't been the bestest of, bestest, is that a word? I haven't been the, uh, the most honorable, I guess, person, you know, in my younger years. Um, I was very much a, a, a heavy drug addict and alcoholic and just pretty much an asshole when I was on certain drugs and definitely when I was drunk uh, I wasn't the nicest person um, but you know I've been sober for many many years and all that but again this is you know this is looking at you know yourself uh, maybe you know somewhat taking a deeper look in yourself and and this is what comes out um, so that was the basis pretty much around this was basically like you know looking into a mirror what, what do you see beyond the reflection what do you, what's what's there beyond just the the surface you know you look at yourself in a mirror you're just looking at yourself but you know sometimes in some situations you certainly need to go a lot deeper and you know I've been through hundreds if not thousands probably more like thousands of hours of therapy and um, you know and all that and I still I don't go to therapy anymore because you know if any of y'all know my the painting has taken place of my therapy visits uh, once a week but uh, I still see a psychiatrist um, because I am medicated um, but you know even when you know going to therapy and then probing you and you know you're digging deep and stuff and, and getting out all those uh, getting all those skeletons out of the closet so to speak you know where uh you know where do you end up how do you go forward once you you know bring all that stuff to the surface um but but nonetheless you know um i knew initially i, I wanted a yellow background or should i say yellow border and I, I was gonna you know create some use some fluid paints on the inside in the center the mirror if you will um but um, but yeah, this uh, you know this is a little early. Um, somewhat inspiration. My inspiration somewhat too was um, Mental Health Week, which I think is sort of ridiculous in the sense that um, the fact that you get a week for things or you know Black History Month and 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 all this kind of stuff like it should be like that all the time. Uh, you know, but Mental Health Week is until October, so this is a little bit in advance. Um, I'm, I'm supposed to be, well, I'm hoping to be part of a, a show here in Cleveland um, for uh, that's specifically for Mental Health Week. I've submitted a couple pa paintings, and um, I'm hoping I get selected to exhibit um, because a lot of my paintings and a lot of the reason why I paint is, you know, for mental health uh, reasons. Um, but anyways, just to catch up, I, uh, I used a, uh, um, um, a crusher marker to create those lines and then um, hitting it with some uh, water and that was a little spray, a little spray magenta that I found um, at Joanne Fabrics, which I actually sent a picture on my Instagram, but it was cool. 
Um, but I, hit, I, I do that when I do this technique, I usually hit it with alcohol, spray, you know, in a spray bottle, and I also hit it with that's the alcohol right there. As you can see, it's having a different effect. Um, but I hit it with alcohol and I hit it with water, alter, alternate, alternate, and it gives uh, a really unique um, thing. Now, this is where I'm hitting it with some of uh, the fluid, uh, golden fluid paints. But, um, but yeah, uh, you know, this is just, you know, kind of letting it out. And if I had to look beyond my reflection and beyond the, the surface, you know, yeah, I, I have a pretty dark history. I've done a lot of things. I've been a lot of places. I've known a lot of different types of people. And it's, I chalk it all up really to life experience. And uh, I'm certainly not going to get preachy or anything in this voiceover um because i'm sure <clears throat> you don't want to hear it but um you know it's i can tell you this i've i've gotten to where i've gotten with very very little support from anybody um from family friends whatnot i've, I've had to overcome a lot of demons i've had to quit drugs and everything else on my own and uh, with no support, I, I have to say it's so little support. It's pretty much can't even doesn't even register, doesn't even move the needle. Um. So, anyways, but you have to be strong. You have to find that inner strength, you know, uh, to get you through things. So, anyways, so I, what I, what you just saw in that black bottle was uh, the ink for the crusher marker that I used to fill the crusher marker, which I used at the beginning. And um, I just threw on some black. And uh, yeah, we're going to, of course, you know, wouldn't be an Embrace the Matrix painting if I didn't get the string out. So I figured I'd throw some cool lines in there, you know, kind of uh, representing, you know, lifelines, your lines, my lines. You know, this is, this is probably an example of the many lives I've lived. Um, like a cat, you know, and I has, cat has nine lives, you know, allegedly or you know, spiritually or whatever, um, yeah, I've done, a, you know, done so many kind of heavy drugs and drinking and combining that, yeah, I probably should have died a hundred fucking times by now, um, but, uh, you know, funny enough that I've done, as the amount of drugs I've done and, and killed so many brain cells, yet, you know, I managed to, you know, create and run a successful business over 10 years, you know, being also that I'm a high school dropout, and, you know, my, my point is just, given that I've, you know, headed down a pretty, you know, negative path in my life, I managed to turn it around and and actually become a lot more successful than people I know that went to college, you know, and spent four years in college and have gotten degrees and things, um, so, but yeah, at this point, we're just kind of, you know, feeling it, and we're throwing colors on it, and um, you know we're seeing what uh, what we're gonna get out of this. This is all feeling. This is yeah. Some of this is calculated, but I gotta be honest. A lot of it's just feeling. Just going with the flow. Um, I do most of my paintings late at night, so not only is my household sleeping, but probably a better part of the world that I live in, an area. This, so it's everything is pretty calm. What I mean is when I'm when I'm painting at night, I know the world, at least this side of it, is fairly calm. Most people are sleeping. So, you know, it kind of wipes out a lot of that angst and negative energy that just seems to fly around all over. I, I deal with it every day and, uh, you know, helps me get, get, get it out. And that's, that's what I do. That's why I enjoy painting and enjoy creating. Um... And, you know, I kind of go back and forth here on this with, you know, some alcohol and um, some lines. Uh, I'm pretty sure I throw some more paint in there. And, um, yeah, you know, so. So how you guys doing? You guys doing good? You enjoying uh, my videos? Uh, please, if let me just take a quick break to do a little bit of promotion. If you do like the videos, please subscribe. Please like, thumbs up. And uh, more importantly, in my opinion, is comment. You know, tell me what you thought. You know, did you like the painting? Did you not like it? What did you like about it? You know, um, I'm not doing these videos 
to try to necessarily sell them. I'm just trying to show you my creative process. I'm not even trying to show you techniques. I'm not trying to show you anything. I'm not trying to teach you nothing. I'm not trying to get you educated about anything. I'm just here showing you this is the process that I go through when I create these works of art. And but I'd love to know I'd love to hear the feedback. I've gotten a lot of positive feedback. I've gotten some negative feedback to be honest, but uh, it's very the negative feedback is just few and far between and I think it's more just people just being jerks and they're not really constructively you know being negative. I, I can take constructive criticism, but what I what I you know who's a big fan of people just being negative and saying, oh well, that sucks, you suck. Well, why does it suck? Why do I suck? you know okay. Yeah, let's be a more let's a little be a more a uh, little more adult about it. That's like a twelve year old description of something. Like uh, I don't like Brussels sprouts because they suck, but you've never tried them, so how do you know? You know that kind of thing. So um, you know, I just went through that with somebody who's not twelve years old, who's in their late twenties, who's never had sushi but hates it. And I'm a huge fan of sushi. And my thought was like, well, I'm gonna buy some sushi and um you can try it and they were not sure about it and stuff and i said well that's just pretty silly because you've never tried it so how do you know if you don't like it well it's because well it's raw fish and stuff well that's your ignorance because not all sushi is raw fish so anyways funny enough when i did get the sushi and i got a lot of the vegetarian maki rolls and stuff they seem to eat it and like it pretty well so there you go try something new so anyways, here we go. Here's the fun part. This is what I classify the fun part is pulling off the tape. Because as good as I am with taping stuff off, sometimes, as you'll see right away, and I did as well, that the, the ink bled through under the tape. I was trying to keep the edges yellow because I was going to do what I was going to do, but I needed the edges to stay yellow. And look at that. They did not. So, unfortunately, when you're using just regular heavy body acrylics, you never don't really have this issue. But because I was using fluids, those things can creep. And yeah, they creeped up underneath that tape like a son bitch. Um, especially on the left side there. So, that's okay. Well, listen, I. The Bob Ross. It's only happy accidents, right? I already have a plan. Um, when I seen it, because I kind of thought it might happen. I figured, all right, well, we'll just, we'll have to fix it. And as you'll see here shortly, this is how I fixed it. Um, or not even really fixed it, but got it to where I wanted it. Because, again, I had the idea of how I was setting up. This part here is tough. Like, when you're trying to put tape on and cut an inner edge, man, I've gotten a real delicate hand, so I do not cut through the, I don't, I don't just not cut through the canvas. I don't even cut through the paint. I literally just cut through the tape. I, I've gotten a very sharp, exacto knife that I only use for stuff like this um, and yeah when you're trying to cut a nice straight inner edge to something it's tough um, uh, but yeah you have to be delicate or you'll go right through the canvas I mean because you know exacto knives are pretty sharp so but that's what I'm doing here is because I know I'm gonna I need to tape off the inside so I can get paint on the outside so um, yeah, and I'm and I'm putting the tape pushing it down I'm pushing the tape down and I'm cutting it down. You just have to have a real light hand, um, and and you'll be able to, uh, you know, get it. And I haven't yet cut through a canvas, um, so I've been lucky. I just, I just know that you have to be real delicate. And uh, fortunately, the biz painter's tape is not very thick, but nonetheless, if you want to get a nice straight, clean edge, um, that's pretty much how I do it. So yeah. So we're going to mask off the inside. Surprise, surprise. And, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, so this, this is a real mental health themed painting. A lot of mine are, but this one really was, um, uh, initially and throughout the whole process very much, you know, cracking, cracking in a little on my, how my mind works a little bit and, you know, I am I'm I try to stay as positive as I can you know one of my hashtags is positive through negative you know I I, I hashtag that all the time I, I don't think anybody else is I've seen anybody else do it 
Um, but I, I believe, you know, you can definitely take a negative, and I've had lots of them, and turn them into a positive. So, you know, that's why I, I'm not, like, philosophizing or getting all crazy. But, yeah, I mean, I really think that, you know, you, you can you do your best to take a take a negative, turn it into a positive. And I don't mean, you know, well, life hands you lemonade, lemons, what you do, you make lemonade, you know, screw all that shit. You know, I have struggles. I'm far, far from perfect. My, my, my wife might disagree with you in that thought, um, but I am far from perfect. I, I strive for perfection. I strive to be the best person I can. But nonetheless, you know, um, I struggle. Even though I'm medicated and 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 do my best to uh, to you know stay active and, and and work out and and eat right and all that stuff and. You know, I try to, I struggle. I struggle with my weight. I struggle with my mental issues. I, I struggle with my business. I struggle with people. I struggle with everything. I just do my best. Oh, to cut in a little, what I'm doing here is I'm just throwing on a gray uh, latex, um, uh, acrylic latex gray from uh, Ace Hardware that I use. I usually use this to do backgrounds because I like uh, a gray background. All, any and all colors will pop off gray especially white but nonetheless I'm like well I'm not going to try to put yellow over that because that's just black and it's just going to look like look like booty um, so let's just like prime it so basically this is more of like a priming thing so uh, I'm just going to redo the yellow but I need it to, but you can even see the blacks coming through on the um, coming through on the gray and that'll show right up on the uh, through the yellow so I, let, I think I let it dry for a second. I, I put a, a fan on it and I put a blow dryer on it, and then I come back and um, and add another little bit of a little more a uh, little more gray. And try to get rid of as much of that black as possible. But um, but yeah, like I was saying, you know, I, I struggle. Um, you know, I I take SSRIs and and you know for my you know depersonalization derealization and my anxiety issues and stuff and it helps i found you know i've been through different pills and stuff you know but any of you know my history you know i went through years of holistic approaches to maintaining mental health and it worked for a little bit but i had to go to western medicine which was against everything i believed in everything i thought but i couldn't you know i could not get up and go to work every day and although I have workers and, and everything else, I need to work as well. And I couldn't, you know, there were many days where I, I just would lay in bed and I couldn't get up. Or if I did and I managed to get through and uh, get a shower and get dressed, I would, um, you know, I'd find myself taking a lot of breaks. And the only thing for me that would honestly relax me was laying down, watching YouTube videos on my phone. That's exactly what I would do. I would just lay down and watch YouTube videos after YouTube. I had hours of YouTube videos, just random stuff, just whatever. Um, and that is honestly what would help bring me down and relax me, you know, besides taking a Xanax or something like that. But that's certainly not the first thing I'd go for. I'd go for the lay down and, you know, watch some videos and stuff and, and try to just put my mind elsewhere because you know I'm obviously a very creative person but I'm also a heavy thinker and my it's hard for my brain to shut down especially at night um, I'm always worrying about stuff I'm always you know thinking about the next thing I mean I run a I run a you know a very very lucrative business and you know which means responsibilities and means you have to you know you have competition which we we have you know, my primary business is a niche business I started in 2006, but and since then, you know, we were the first, but competition has come up since then based on our model. So, you know, I got to stay, stay relevant and, you know, cutting edge and all that kind of stuff. So my brain is always working and, you know, so it's tough for it to shut down, you know, not even just on the painting side of things, just on life in general and, and you know, my other business, my primary business, like the art stuff doesn't pay my bills, not not even close. In fact, it's it's taking money. Uh, you know, I've only uh, sold one painting uh, since I started in January, which is fine. I do this not necessarily to sell paintings. Um, I do it for 
my own relaxation and therapy, but I would like to sell them because I think they're good enough to be sold. And I've had a lot of people give me a lot of positive comments about how much they like them. So um, that and I'm piling them up everywhere. I have over 120 paintings and yeah, I need to get rid of some and make room for more, obviously. But anyways, yeah, as you can see, I'm hitting it with some yellow, um, and I'm actually, not, I, I brushed it on, and then another thing I like to do is I just like to tap, you'll see I'm just tapping the brush, I'm just like giving it texture, you know, I don't necessarily like smooth strokes, I like texture, so I'm kind of giving it some, uh, some, some dynamics, some dimension, you know, kind of bringing it off the canvas a little bit, and, uh, you know, we're gonna that's going to be the background now what i'm doing you can't see it but you'll see it is i'm spraying some black paint in a in a mister in a paint mister thing and this is i i found this stuff at um at joanne fabrics um i just went to joanne fabrics for the first time in a long time and i happened to walk down their their paint aisle and i saw these little bottles of um uh, what you call it? Um, it's it's just water-based paint, but it's in a little mister, and it just man, it gave it an awesome kind of look. So that's what that was, and of course, you know, throwing on some golden um, fluid, liquid, whatever. They, I don't know. They got fluid. They got liquid. Whatever. I don't know. This is the stuff in those bottles. Um, threw a little red. Threw a little magenta. That's my big fat head. I'm blowing out the bubbles that happen. Um, when sometimes you do that, they get bubbles and stuff. So I gotta, uh, I want to blow the bubbles because I don't want them to dry with bubbles in them. So you know, we're, this is all giving that border some really cool, um, it's a cool look, cool technique, cool, cool dynamics. All right, let's see. Everything's looking good. I'm pretty happy. But here's the thing: I usually don't let paint dry with tape on it. I usually paint it and then I'll peel the tape off and you'll see why in a bit as you can see right there on the left side there I peeled a chunk of paint off no problem we're gonna fix it but nonetheless that's why I don't like um, letting the paint dry and then putting the tape on but given the situation I kind of had to so nonetheless you know because you run the risk of ripping that paint off especially if you put thick paint on which I do um, you can even see towards the top right and the bottom bottom right, you know, where there's a little where the paint peeled off. But that's okay. It's all good. You're, I, I knew I was going to put a border on it, and you'll see exactly what I do to fix that. Um, so as you can see, the, 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 the center part, the, the, the mirror part, is done. That's We're not messing with that no more. Right now, we're just messing with the border and stuff. So it's good, but even with the tape, it left somewhat of an edge between the inner edge of the yellow and the, the black part. So I'm right now, I'm thinking, all right, well, I knew I was going to put an inner border on, but I have to fix one section right there, as you can see, where the paint lifted up pretty good chunk so basically what I do is I mask off the one side and then I just drop some some red drip drip drops on there and just kind of thicken it up a little bit I mean, that's the great thing about it, acrylic paint is that it all just kind of melts together just you know get every, everybody gets to know everybody on the canvas so look boom fixed um, so I uh, let that dry and as you can see I forgot to turn the camera on but I already put uh, a border around that inner side with uh, the golden fluid um, first I used the silver and then I, right next to it I'm doing black and to get a finer line I am uh, I put it in a squeeze bottle so I can get a nice you know a little more control but basically all I'm doing is squeezing a, a line now you're probably thinking well that looks pretty stupid just a couple squirty lines ah well it's gonna be unstupid in a second here because one of the techniques I've used is um, using an exacto knife to drag the paint see look we're stabbing the camera um, 
you know, you gotta sit down for this and get crazy because here we go. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just drawing the paint back and forth. Um, so the black is getting pulled into the silver, the silver is getting pulled into the black, and it's creating this great like sawtooth kind of edge. And I use that similar technique when creating like um, stars and stuff like that with, with acrylic paint. Um, but for this, the, the only part I wasn't sure about was what two colors I was going to use. And I just thought, man, you know, that silver is, is awesome. That golden silver liquid stuff is just great. And then throw some black and kind of just bring this. This just brings the border and the, the center part, the mirror part all together. Um, so almost like if you really get crazy and you really look at it and you'll see it in the stills that I took it's hard to see what's going on right here all you do is see my hand moving back and forth and then I'm cleaning off the the exacto knife because I don't want too much paint to blend but almost like you know the the edge of the border like the mirror itself has is is, is got its grips on you like it's got its talons in you and it's holding on while you're trying to escape I know it seems a little crazy but I don't know it's kind of where my mind goes when I'm doing certain things like this um, I'm definitely thinking about uh, the overall aspect image of this creation and I, I mean I, I follow a lot of a lot of a lot of artists a lot of painters you know some guys are really into the dark art and I really like dark art and some of my stuff I think would be classified as dark art I, I would certainly hopefully hopefully think you could classify this one as a dark art piece but um, it's I don't like categories and to be labeled and pigeon held and stuff I mean all my stuff is abstract no doubt about it but beyond that it is what it is I mean I, I can't put any other type of style or any type of descriptor on it I mean I just do what I feel um, I've said it before, I, I love painting because you create the rules and there are no rules. So there are no rules, yet you can create the rules. Do you see how convoluted it sounds? I know, but that's the beauty of it. Like you, you create whatever rules. I love it because when I'm doing certain things, I can go, okay, I'm just going to put seven dots and that's that. And then this color is going to have seven dots and maybe this color, there's 10 dots. And you know, if you look at some of my paintings, some of the stuff is calculated and there's a there's a logic behind the number of dots or the number of lines and stuff like that um, you don't as the viewer you're looking at it and you're not thinking about that but I can give you a little little secret that yeah a lot of this is very calculated and and has a different deeper meaning with numbers um, so not everything not every one of my pieces are like that but um, some are um, but anyways so yeah so we're you know we're rounding here the edge I'm just dragging back and forth trying to keep it fairly not even because you're not getting even marks but I'm trying to keep the overall look of the border the inner border fairly even so um, and you know of course being careful not to drag my hand through it because um, that would just screw the whole pooch and we don't want that to happen. I've had my fair share of art mistakes where I've dropped canvases full of paint and stuff. And yeah, this one I was being extra, extra careful on, to be honest, because once I started doing this bo inner border, I just knew it was just, it was awesome. I was going to look awesome. And the, what I really can't wait for is I can't wait to varnish this one because I know when I varnish this one in a couple weeks, it's going to pop. It's going to really look awesome. But, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, here comes some stills. There you go. See what I was talking about? Dragging that silver and the black. It just pulled itself um, back and forth. And it just, it just brought that yellow border and the black center. It just it bleed, it brings it together. Done. Um, so, yeah, there's a great shot right there. Um, it's just uh, just amazing. Here's how it turned out. It's hard to see these pictures on this scale when they're the 12 by 36 
canvases, but you know, that's why you gotta come out to some of my art showings and see them in person. Anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Like, comment, subscribe. You know what to do.